Welcome to the sixth part of this seven part series on writing effective diet plans. Now, what we're going to look at in today's lesson is nutrition periodization. Because here's the thing you need to know. No diet plan is going to work forever. Okay? Every diet plan, no matter how well designed, is going to have negative metabolic adaptations that are going to start to take place after a certain period of being on that diet plan. So say, for example, if you stay in a deficit for too long, what's going to start happening is thyroid level is going to get ramped down, leptin level is going to get ramped down, all your hunger hormones will go up, your catabolic hormones will increase, your anabolic hormones will decrease. So what happens if you stay too long in a deficit, the body will start to become more actually catabolic in muscle tissue versus fat and you'll start to compensate and try to conserve energy. So fat loss will stall. So you can't stay in a deficit for too long of a period of time. Now same thing, if you're actually in a mass gain phase and you have calories too high for too long, what will happen is initially you might feel great, energy will go up, um, you know, sex drive will go up, strength will go up, you'll feel great. But then after a certain period of being on that plan, what will happen is you'll start to feel inflamed, you'll start to feel sluggish, you'll start to get achy joints, you'll start to put on body fat, you'll become more insulin resistant, more leptin resistant, and you'll disproportionately start gaining more and more body fat and less and less lean muscle tissue. So you can't stay in a bulking phase indefinitely either. So you're gonna to have to cycle your diet over the course of um, you know, the months, years, so forth, because it doesn't matter what your goal is, no diet's gonna work forever. So let me give you an example here of a fat loss phase. Now, what do most people do when they go into a cutting phase? So let's say they start at 100% of their, which is their baseline caloric intake. We can calculate this just from basically calculating the resting metabolic rate and then uh, daily energy expenditure through exercise and then through spontaneous activity. Now, most people who start at maintenance, they will initially drop calories then what would happen is they'll initially lose weight, then they'll plateau. So typically after three to six weeks, you'll see a person will plateau. Now at that point, what do most people do? They drop calories again. They plateau again, they drop calories. And what happens is by continuing dropping lower and lower and lower, you keep ramping down the metabolism further and further, you start becoming more and more catabolic in your muscle tissue, and your body starts to hold on to as much fat as it can as an energy reserve. And not to mention, once you increase your calories, uh, what happens because you've ramped down your thyroid uh, metabolism so low, you're more likely to put on excess fat now, um, especially because your anabolic hormones are ramped down as well. Your body's more anabolic in fat versus muscle, so you're more likely then to put on body fat versus uh, muscle once you increase your calories. So what I like to do, when I drop someone, I take them into a deficit, I may keep them there for three to six weeks because inevitably they're going to plateau in that deficit. Once they plateau though, instead of actually bringing them lower, what I do is take them out of the deficit, okay? One to two weeks of just bringing someone back up to maintenance will reset leptin levels, it will reset their thyroid, all their anabolic hormones will go back up, and in essence, you can take them back to 80%, and now they'll start losing where they had previously plateaued, okay? Because now, you've basically increased the metabolic set point back to its original, or close to its original point, rather than continually having to drop it. So yes, this process takes a little bit longer, but over time you may be able to maintain a much higher metabolic set point so you can retain more muscle, and then once you go off your diet, it's a lot easier for you to maintain that body fat without blowing out. So in essence, you drop, may hold there for three to six weeks, once you plateau, bring yourself out of deficit for one to two weeks, and then you'll go back into a deficit, and you'll repeat that process. And again, how long you stay here will depend on the person. Some, generally, the leaner someone is, the quicker they're going to plateau. So the shorter period you can keep them in a deficit. Also, the quicker they're going to go catabolic. So the shorter period you can keep them in a deficit. So for someone who's very overweight, they might be able to stay in a deficit six to eight weeks, and then you take them out. For someone who's quite lean, maybe three weeks, and they'll plateau. If, so this is here is what we call macro cycling, because we're varying the nutrition basically week to week or even month to month. Now with someone who's very lean, we know leaner people because their leptin levels are lower, they tend to crash or tank much quicker. What I might do is every three or four days actually ramp the calories back up to maintenance. Every three to four days ramp the calories back up to maintenance. Taking the calories up to maintenance for a day is not gonna do anything to increase metabolic rate, but it may mitigate the rate at which the metabolism um, compensates okay so basically if someone uh, who's quite lean 
and you put them in a deficit, normally a plateau after three weeks. If you take them up every third day or so, because that will mitigate the drop in metabolic rate, you might be able to keep them in a deficit instead of three weeks, maybe four or five, even six weeks by doing what's called microcyclical uh, periodization. So you can use a combination of both macro and microcyclical periodization. This also works if you're in a mass gain phase, because if you constantly stay um, above baseline, like I said, you're going to start developing insulin resistance, you're going to start developing inflammation, you're going to start putting on body fat. So if you take someone into a mass gain phase, what you can do is once their body fat goes up above a certain level, so for me that point tends to be about 12% for my male clients and about 20% for my female clients, if their body fat goes above that, what I'll do is then take them into a mini cut. So I pull back their calories, just reset the insulin sensitivity, help bring the body fat back down. Then I'll take them into a surplus again. And that's how I keep my clients lean year round. That's how I keep myself year, uh, lean year round and can keep gaining muscle mass. What you could do there as well is every third or fourth day, um, if you're in high, you can bring it low. Okay, so every third or fourth day, drop the calories. If you drop calories for one day, that's not enough to really uh, send the body into a catabolic state but it's enough to reset insulin sensitivity so the next day when you increase calories again, the, your muscles are gonna be more receptive to those calories and less of those calories are likely to go into your fat cells. So <clears throat> in a nutshell, the purpose of nutritional periodization is because your body, no matter what diet you're on, is going to adapt to that dietary strategy. So you need both microcycling, which is within the week, and macrocycling, which is week to week, month to month, in order to offset those negative uh, metabolic adaptations. So hopefully that was useful for you. That's a big part of something you need to understand for getting long-term success with your clients. Because anyone can put someone on a diet, they get really good results for the first three or four weeks and then they hit a wall. And most people don't know where to go from there or they just, like I said, they'll keep taking calories down and then worse things start to happen. So by being aware of this, this will put you ahead of most uh, people, most people in the industry because they just don't do things like that. So. Again, I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you tomorrow for the final lesson which is going to be on business and how to set up your nutrition consulting business. Thank you.